Plymouth is the largest city on Britain's south coast. Its history is built on a strong seafaring tradition. For centuries, the Devon port has been home to fishermen, explorers setting out to discover the new world, and the Royal Navy. Her Majesty's naval base at Devonport is the largest and amongst the most modern in Western Europe. Plymouth is a maritime city and the whole growth of Plymouth, the whole story of Plymouth is about its relationship with the sea. But across the city, architects and developers are building a new modern Plymouth. It is a very bold and exciting plan, and this kind of plan takes 20 or 30 years to deliver. A city where its maritime tradition is at the forefront of its redevelopment. It's probably the most important buildings in Europe. English heritage consider them to be more important military buildings than Greenwich. The city of Plymouth has a population of 250,000. The waterfront, and in particular the Royal Navy, has shaped its history. It grew as a result of coastal trade with its European neighbours. And as markets opened across the Atlantic, it found itself in conflict with other emerging empires, in particular Spain, which resulted in the famous defeat of the Armada in 1588. But like the buildings recording the battle, the city itself has suffered. It was heavily bombed during the Second World War, and post-war planning left it with what some critics describe as an architecturally haphazard skyline. Now Plymouth Council, along with local architects and developers, have set about revitalizing the city and correcting mistakes of the past. Essentially, Plymouth has been a working class city and the, wa the water and the sea has been seen as a place of work, either for the Royal Navy or the Merchant Navy, uh, and it hasn't been recognized historically, as far as Plymouth is concerned, as a place for leisure and hasn't, hasn't been seen in that terms of value. And now that's changing. And as part of the new vision for Plymouth, we are looking to create much better links between the city and the waterfront. So, for example, we are planning a new boulevard from the city centre down to Mill Bay, which is the major, major harbour in the, in the city centre. A major criticism levelled at the post-war planners was the decision to separate residential and business building in the city. The result, particularly in the centre, was a mass of empty buildings after business hours. As part of a plan to bring life back into the centre, a new doctrine has evolved where buildings are redesigned to serve more than one purpose. It's a cameo of what we would like to see in the rest of the city because it's providing a bar and restaurant for leisure on the ground floor, but it's also providing living over the top, so it becomes a building that's 24 hours used. For centuries, Plymouth's economy has been heavily dependent on the Royal Navy. It's helped the city to grow, but it's also playing a part in its decline. Since the end of the Cold War, defence spending has fallen. The base still supports a vast fleet of warships and submarines, but where the dockyard employed over 15,000 workers in 1981, that figure has dropped to around 3,000 by 1997. The city has diversified into developing new industries, but the naval presence is still strong. Plymouth is reinventing itself, really. It, it's known as a dockyard town, always associated with the Royal Navy. Of course, the Royal Navy is starting to decrease in terms of warships, so Plymouth is having to find a new role for itself. And its new role will be in the newer industries and newer technologies, but also in terms of uh, reinventing itself as a, as a place for inward investment that will see an increase in its population over the next 20 years. And alongside an increase in the population will go uh, a range of new housing opportunities. And this is one of the major planks in the, in the housing market in that it will provide uh, new dwellings for people to come in both for open market and for rented and shared equity occupation as well as hundreds of new businesses coming in. On the site of what was once a bustling port within Plymouth Sound are the beginnings of the city's largest regeneration since the Second World War. This will be a mixed-use scheme on a grand scale. The £300 million Mill Bay project will see nearly 2,500 new homes, a marina, offices and hotels. This will be a new quarter for the city, a new major residential area. There could be about 5,000 residents coming into this area when it's so this is going to be a great place to be, it's going to be a great place to visit. 
Um, so the big idea is that it'll be an extension to the, uh, to the city centre, well linked to the city centre, but a maritime quarter, a waterfront quarter of the city where people want to come and live or want to come and visit. An example of what the Mill Bay development could become is evident in the tourist quarter of Plymouth. Alongside new marinas, restaurants and apartments, Sutton Harbour is still a working port with a thriving fishing industry. From these shores near the historic Barbican, the Pilgrim Fathers set sail for America, along with thousands of others looking to start a new life across the horizon. Today, the shipping lanes are still bustling with activity. This is a, um, a dear old harbour, really, the harbour where Drake set sail from, the Pilgrim Fathers set sail from. A harbour, in effect, almost like the birthplace of the new world, really. Um, but ultimately, what had happened to the end of the 1980s, you had commercial shipping that was dying out, you had fishing with all health and hygiene regulations on the old fish market, you had a harbour that dried out at low tide and flooded at high tide. So we were confronted with, well, what are we going to be doing? What the developers behind Sutton Harbour did is regarded by the city as probably its best example of bringing economic and social life into a fading seaport. Today, owners of lavish apartments share the harbour with yachts, motorboats and all manner of vessels. Development is still continuing, with plans to link the area more effectively with the town centre. I think Sutton Harbour has worked, and I, and I think most commentators say that Sutton Harbour has worked. And I think what makes it unique is not clearly just the shape of the harbour and its history, but, but actually it's a fact there's a mixed-use scheme with such variety of uses. And I think Mill Bay can almost be um, Sutton Harbour 20, 30 years on from the development that we're doing here. Further along the coast is perhaps the finest example of historical regeneration taking place in Britain. The buildings making up the Royal William Yard date back to 1825 and for more than 160 years they provided supplies to the Royal Navy until they vacated the site in the early 1990s. We had to get approvals for the colour of paint we use on the columns, the way we clean the stonework, the way we sanded down the floors. Every bit of detail had to, be go, had to go through with English Heritage uh, point by point. And it took probably two years of confidence building with English Heritage for them to trust us to then go on to the next building. Uh, and the, the problems were immense. Um, the way these buildings were originally constructed, the nails aren't the sort of nail you would buy. They were six inch cast iron nails that, that you couldn't extract, so it's those sorts of things you, you can't see. So far, over £20 million has been spent on simply restoring the buildings. The result has been a mix of original 17th century construction and 21st century design. The project has won a number of awards, and like other developments taking place across the city, the spaces within it are designed to serve different purposes. We've got a long-term plan uh, to develop the yard. We've been working on it since approximately uh, 2002, although our planning work started I I earlier in 1999. And uh, the plans are to create a, a mixed-use development. We have people living here already. We have uh, a residents uh, in occupation for the last couple of years. We've got restaurants and bars, exhibition space. We've got offices under construction. We've got the, the university's Faculty of Art in operation here. And we've got many other plans that will go into the other buildings, which even will include a hotel, ultimately. Plymouth has a proud maritime history, but with a decline in its traditional employment base, it's having to find a new role for itself. Having suffered significant structural as well as economic damage, its architects and developers are looking to embrace its past so that it can fully capitalise on its unique harbour and waterfront. Plymouth has to adjust and it is adjusting. Uh, and it's exciting times, I guess, in many respects. Obviously, it's sad from a, I'm a historian, so you're kind of sad to see certain things change, but the world is constantly changing. For centuries, Plymouth was the last stop for those seeking a new life abroad. Now, with hundreds of millions of pounds worth of regeneration projects underway, a revitalized Plymouth is seeking to encourage a new influx to increase its population and boost its economy.